Let's start off with the game between Nigeria and the Benin Republic. The Super Eagles of Nigeria kicked off their race to qualify for the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations Championship in Cameroon with a win against uh, the Squirrels of Benin Republic. Sessegno scored the first goal for Benin in the third minute, but Leo striker Victor Osimhen, the one we call the star boy, he pulled one back for Nigeria from the penalty spot in the dying moment of the first half. And Samuel Kalu scored from a brilliant effort in the 63rd minute to give Nigeria the lead. And Ahmed Musa came in for Victor Osimhen towards the end of the game. Now, this game between Nigeria and Benin Republic, yes, it was um, um, a must win for the Chipper Eagles. We had a lot of um, rumors concerning the coach and the NFF concerning uh, selection of players. There was also the issue of coverage of yeah. the match. A whole lot of good sides and bad sides to this game between Nigeria and Benin. I'd like to get your own opinion and your own view of everything that happened yesterday. Um, to start with, it, was, it, it is really commendable that the Super Eagles did um, start off on a very good note, mm. um, winning the game against Benin Republic. Um, it's unfortunate, however, you know, that, like you mentioned, we had every, those instances, particularly that as regards Raw, his time as coach, you know, rumours, speculations here and there, yeah. indicating that his time um, at the head, as the head of um, the Super Eagles is, is, is running down. You know, um, but it's, it's one which we don't want to see. Of course, there are question marks about you know, his tactics, his tactical play, um, the technical, technical performance of the team as a whole. Yeah. But we, we must commend Raw, if at all, for one particular key element. And that is the fact that, and that is his man management style. It has really helped to ensure stability within the team, within the camp, you know, ac across, across board and, uh, and in, in that interrelationship among the players. We, we, we hardly hear of squabbles yeah. or one misunderstanding here and there, uh -huh. like we've seen in recent past. You know, so that is one aspect that has to be commended on the part of Raw uh -huh. in, in view of his um, time as head coach of the Super Eagles. Uh -huh. Now, still looking at that game, uh, we, we can as well talk about the coverage. I mean, if you're going to cover a football match, you know that it's going to be a football match on that particular day. Why not put in your best effort to make sure that you give it the best of coverage? Because yesterday, from what we saw all over Twitter, all over social media, um, the football fans hammered on the TV station that covered the football match, and it was, it was not good enough. But kudos to them that they even tried to put up a coverage for this match, but was the job even well done? Even at the end of the game, the commentator, that's the major one trending on Twitter now, the commentator <laughs> said, Super Eagles 2, Nigeria, Nigeria 1. one. You know, <laughs> I mean... I, I, it, was, it, was, it was all a comedy show mm. from, uh, last night game. It was, it was more of a comedy show than even a game of Proper football. football match, yeah. You know, um, yes, the, no thanks to the coverage from the NTA. I think um, the, the, whole, the whole setting to this is not just about... Um, granting some media right or broadcast right to one uh, major broadcast, broadcaster, you know. But it's, it's, down to the need to, it's down to the need of structure. Yeah. We don't have a broadcast structure that would guarantee or ensure, you know, competitive bidding or competitive interest for broadcasting of our, of our, of our, of our games. Mm. And that, that needs to change. So it's even, it's even not just about the NFF. It's, yes, the NFF has its, has its role to play, but it's a lot to do with the broadcast code yeah. that this nation has on the table. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's dysfunctional, to say the least. It's not helpful. It's not competitive driven. Mm -hmm. And that in itself will not even influence or in any way positively affect the performance or the overall growth of our sports. Mm. So it's, it's down to the broadcast code, you know, that would, that would identify key players, you know, that would ensure competition, not just the issuance of the rights to one broadcast yeah. company, but competition that would, that would at least, we, we see stations like, um, that, um, that, that we have across the world where one broadcaster can ha have rights to highlight, mm. you know, another broadcaster has rights to the, um, full the, full, the full match. Now, these are things that we want to see happening in our own culture, but we don't have that at the moment. Oh. And that is stifling the growth of um, our sports from the media point of, view. point of view. So it really is important that we get to have a look at our broadcast code, 
But particularly, we need to have a broadcast code that addresses sports, mm. not necessarily captured within the broader context of, of um, television view. But sports in particular, there yeah. needs to be something that can drive that competition and ensure that players can come on board. Something that will even give birth to more indigenous companies mm -hmm. to come on board and participate. They can do, we can do what um, other broadcasters are doing in the continent. We can, mm -hmm. once we have that environmental condition provided and open up for us mm -hmm. to play in. Talking about marketability of our sports, uh, of our football in, not just football now, sports in general. 